Welcome to the Startup Grind. Without further ado, our guests tonight are Johnny and Paige Hanna. They collectively have helped start Property Solutions and are going into their second startup, Homie.com. So without further ado, let's give a very warm Startup Grind welcome to Johnny and Paige Hanna. Thank you. I just want to start by giving a plug to Izeni. We're working with those guys with homie.com, and we're looking forward to it. Sweet. So let's go ahead, and uh, I want to give a little bit of a preface to this conversation. So when, when I reached out to Johnny about coming and being a speaker here at Startup Grind, uh, there became uh, something very evident about their story. Uh, in particular, Paige's involvement in that story. And so we have Paige here to help represent both sides of the story. And I've been instructed to play Mari. And so this might seem a little bit like marriage counseling at its <laughs> finest. And, and so just to set the expectation, uh, we're really going to get to see the full picture of what a startup is like from both founder and spouse. So. Just to get started, I want to ask Johnny a little bit about your background and specifically about, you know, as a child, did you think you would be an entrepreneur? Um, I, I don't think I ever thought about it. I think I always looked for ways to make money growing up. Um, I looked for ways to pay for college while I was in college, but I, I never thought, you know, of that term. Okay. Um, I've, I've actually hated that term when I've heard, you know, people call themselves that. It, it's It's kind of bugged me, but um, but I, in, in opportunities have just kind of presented themselves to me through through friends. Um, you know, my, my first company, I was recruited to that by my first two partners, and uh -huh. then with this new business, I was recruited into this as well. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's kind of my story. So when you were growing up, going into school, assuming you did pursue higher education, uh, what did you choose to study and why? Um, I, I switched majors quite a few times, actually, and I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. I ended up, after probably my first year in school, after doing generals, I just chose business, knowing that it was pretty vague in general. Uh -huh. So I, I really never had a specific thing I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, so I ended up graduating uh, from BYU-Idaho uh, with my business degree. Really cool. So now I'm going to sh shift over to Paige. And I want you to tell us the story of meeting Johnny and uh, give us a little bit of background of the two of you. Um, well, I, I will give you a lot of background on Johnny <laughs> really quick. Um, he'd been dumped multiple times. <laughs> so he was really desperate. <laughs> and he was so desperate that he was trying to meet all these girls and was meeting them very frequently, you know, night after night after night. And he and I met. Um, and then we didn't see each other again for a year, and then he just showed up on my doorstep with another friend. And I said, oh, you're Johnny Hanna from Montana. And he said, yeah, who are you? <laughs> and how do we know each other? And I just thought, this is such a tool. <laughs> 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 so he had, to, he, he had to impress me from then on, but um, our, we dated uh, for a short period of time. He was living in the basement of a BYU apartment he lived in his closet because the closet was big enough to put a bed. So he would sleep in the bed and he rented out his room. Wow. So there's the joke every morning he came out of the closet. <laughs> and, um, but I, w I was impressed with his work ethic. I actually was really impressed that he ate peanut butter and jelly three meals a day. <laughs> um, it was, he seemed really low maintenance. So he evened me out pretty well. But um, we dated for, for three months. And then um, I said, well, we're going to get married, so we may as well set a date. And then three months later, we were married. Awesome. And uh, yeah, and that's, that's the courtship. Yeah. Cool. And so now, Johnny, where was Property Solutions and your business during this phase? Um, we were about three years into the company. And yeah, I wasn't making much money, so I had to rent out my bedroom to, to one of my coworkers, actually. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that was a little awkward. Um, 
but but yeah, I, the, the company, you know, we were three years into it. We were still really young. We still didn't really know what we were doing. But um, so, I mean, it was still startup phase uh -huh. in our opinion. Um, but but yeah, I mean, I, I we still weren't profitable at the time. So th now let's take a three year step back and uh, tell us about who came up with the idea, uh, how you became involved with it and, you know, the initial getting started. Yeah. So um I, I grew up with, with one of my partners, Dave Bateman. He uh, was from Billings, Montana, and he worked construction with me and my dad. And, uh, you know, my dad had us do all the, the menial labor jobs, and it was just the worst work environment uh -huh. ever. And so we, we always thought, you know, we got to get out of this. We got to figure something else out. Um, and I, I think, you know, that that's kind of what pushed us to, we wanted to work together. We really enjoyed working together. And then um, during college, we kept in touch. And his wife was a property manager. Uh -huh. um, Amanda, she's here actually. Um, she was a property manager at a BYU apartment community, and they, uh, you know, they just talked about all the different manual processes they had to go through. So they came up with this idea to automate property management. And so Dave uh, recruited me, recruited a, you know, a, a few other friends, and and that's how we got started. What what year was this around? Two thousand three. Okay, and the state of the internet. Were people taking a lot of online processing? No, payments? yeah, I mean, the the uh, one of the main ideas was collecting rent online, uh -huh. and that was relatively new. So we, we built an online payment gateway, and that was one of the first products we built. Uh, Amanda had a list, uh, you know, a, just a number of people out the office store wanting to pay rent at the beginning of each month. Yep. Um, so figuring out how to automate that would save her time and her company money and, and having to do that. So... Yeah, I mean, when we first started the company, we were processing maybe, you know, 5% of people that lived in apartment communities were paying online. Uh -huh. and, and it took several years to get that percentage up, you know, even just above 10%. It, it took, you know, four or five years to even get above 10%. So it's still relatively new. And people being able to trust putting their credit cards and ACH numbers online. So what was your primary challenges during this really early phase? Why was the growth so slow? Um, so w we actually uh, wrote a business plan and won the BYU business plan competition, and, and that kind of helped fund it. We won a national business plan competition. Okay. And the the business plan was to build accounting software and then build all these ancillary products like online rent collection, you okay. know, websites, renter's insurance, all these ancillary tools to connect to the accounting software. Mm -hmm. And so it was, it was this one-stop shop, and we didn't have a lot of development muscle, so it just really took a little while to build it out. After the first year, we had to scrap the code. The second year, same thing. We had to start over several times. So, And then as we were going, the only money we were making was from the websites we were selling. So right. we built websites to market the apartment community, and we were making a little bit of money from those rent transactions. So you know, our goal was that accounting software, so we ended up really just shifting our focus, just doing websites and online payments, because mm -hmm. that's where we were actually making money and we we didn't come back to accounting software until just you know a couple of years ago so what what help i mean so y you see where the money's coming from and that helps you make the decision to start heading that way how long did it take for you to arrive at that conclusion um i i think it happened pretty quickly because those were two of the ancillary products that we wanted to end up building uh -huh. but and then we saw in the industry there were only a couple competitors doing it and we didn't feel they were doing it that well so we knew we could own the space for you know the multifamily apartment industry yeah. with websites and online payments, um, you know, and, and that's that's where our income was. So we really focused on that. We built really high tech flip charts, <laughs> going you know <laughs> to to sell our clients on. You know, we we had vaporware, so we went around telling them what we would eventually build them. Yeah. So yeah, that's uh, we we definitely saw an opportunity there, but we always wanted to come back and finish out the whole business plan and build out all the other tools. How formative was the BYU experience in terms of winning uh, the, the competition? Was it more helpful to have had developed the business plan and the requirements that make you go through for the competition? Or was just having that influx of cash ultimately what was more helpful? I think it was the confidence. The, okay. co the confidence was number one from it, I at least for me. Yep. Like I was, I was the sales rep, the client service rep, the photographer. You know, uh -huh. those were all kind of my roles. But yeah, I mean, going out door to door, knowing that, you know, judges, you know, 
you know, these, these businessmen voted us number one. Uh -huh. And then winning the national contest just a few months later, that also gave us that added confidence. I think, you know, BYU gave a prize of $50,000. The national contest gave another 50000 So that, that definitely helped, but sure. it didn't, you know, cover all of our, all of our costs. But, yeah, I, in the local community, a lot of, there, there were a lot of uh, BYU alum who owned apartments. So, you know, we, we met with a lot of them. I, I dated a girl who, whose father owned apartments. So got an in there to oh, get there to her go. father. <laughs> One of my best friends oh. still. <laughs> <laughs> no, she didn't. No, uh, we, we um, yeah, and, and, and she actually introduced us. She became a really good friend of ours and introduced, introduced us. So, so th um, Paige, going back to th this phase of, you know, courtship, uh, how does Johnny convince you to sign on to the closet, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> I mean, anything's going to be a step up for him. You know, he, he was just such a good guy that he didn't have to convince me of, um, of the business side. Sure. I knew, I knew he was a hard worker. I knew he had great work ethic. Um, he had integrity, character, and, and he was not a hard, uh, he didn't have to convince me mm -hmm. very much. I, I trusted that Whatever he did, he'd be successful at, and then I'd worry about, you know, the kid aspect, all of that. So she did dump me for a day, but by that time I knew how to play the game, so I was like, "It's cool, it's not cool. a big deal." <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then she called me back about 24 hours later. So, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> so, so during this this early f phase of being married together and th the company not being profitable. Um, if you could speak to yourself today, what would you tell yourself in that position? Um, the hardest parts, I mean, being a newlywed is hard anyway, but the, um, the things I would look back and change would um, be to solve, solve the problems earlier as far as um, the problems he brought home from work. Uh -huh. And I wish that I could look back and go, okay, this was a continual problem with a, you know, with a coworker or with a client, and I wish we had just gotten to the root of the problem and then talked about more productive ways to solve that rather than just coming home frustrated, you know, doing the same thing over and over and then eventually getting past it and then coming home with a new problem. So, so the old page would be more patient and try to find the the quicker solution uh -huh. than than the, an eight year you know <laughs> an eight year conversation over and over and over. So it sounds like y you you've accepted this idea that you know sort of the the entrepreneur and their business life is going to bleed into their personal life. Uh, w was that an easy thing to accept that you know work is going to come home with Johnny? Um, it it wasn't hard to accept because I preferred it. Did you? I I wanted I wanted to know everybody he worked with. I wanted to know. Um, uh, he Johnny loves people and he loves um, his clients and so I wanted to know their background. Uh -huh. So when he came home to talk about a sales guy, um, I knew that they were just graduated. They were starting to date, and then it made the whole conversation uh, more enjoyable for me and yeah. um, and then in the meantime as I met all of these people his work was a, a part of conversation not in a um, I didn't weigh me down and uh -huh. I wasn't like let's get through this so I can tell you my problems it was well what if what if he's just stressed because of finals or what if he his girlfriend you know is distracting him from this I mean sure. it, it, it made conversation more productive and and that's how we started our relationship, and it's been the same. I love being a part of what w his ideas and, and the growth and everything. So, so from a very early stage, you took a pretty active role in... in Whether he liked it or not, he had my opinion all the time. She bosses me around in everything. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's the way it should be. <laughs> so that's awesome. So now, so moving forward, uh, how have you seen... The, those conversations change. Is, is this just a regular thing? Like you, you bring home your conversations about work, and Paige is you know waiting to hear about it. Like, y yeah, I mean, I, I think you know I don't share everything anymore. Sure. I mean, I think we've solved a lot of problems, and she's helped me just you know know what decisions to make in a lot of cases. So I would bring her 
situations that, that were difficult for me to, to solve. Mm -hmm. And we would talk them through. And, you know, w w what, I, what I love is that, you know, I mean, sh she, she didn't finish college, but her... I basically didn't even start college. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but she, uh, honestly, like, just naturally, she has a business mind. Yeah. And, and, and also, just the feminine perspective on things, too. You know, sharing, I, as she mentioned, you know, I'd, I'd say something about a sales guy, like they're struggling here, you know, how do I, how do I approach this? Or, you know, I'm, I'm looking to, you know, possibly terminate somebody. You know, this is what I'm thinking. And, and she'd give me just amazing counsel and mm -hmm. say, you know, have you thought about this? Or have you thought about that? And we talk it through. So, you know, I mean, she would tell me all about her day, you know, and-, and, and Not really. That's, he thinks he hears about my day. <laughs> we get through a little bit of it before we talk about work. Anyhow, <laughs> <laughs> this is Mari, this is marriage counseling. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, it, I, I know that she's with kids all day and, and being able to have, you know, an adult conversation and go through this, like, it, it is enjoyable for us. I mean, this sounds like more, mm -hmm. I mean, at least from, from my perspective, th this is much more than just, like, speaking to another adult. Like, there, there, there seems to be some, some real validation, at least for you, Paige, that you find in these conversations. Is that true? Um, completely. Because I, um, I did go to college a little bit, but I <laughs> had no idea what I wanted to do. And it was very difficult for me to say, well, this is going to be my major when I was interested in about 90 other things. Yeah. Um, but Johnny bringing this home gave me an opportunity to stretch my mind and think, how would I, how would I solve this? Or how could he approach this and, and make um, more money off of a sale or uh, make a better decision in managing a group of people? And I, I get to sit all day and I get to think about it. And then um, in giving him my opinion, he validated it and he gave me confidence in it to where... I realized that, you know, for me, I didn't need that. I didn't need that gr degree behind me. Even though now I think I know more what I would go do, um, but I don't need that degree behind me to tell me that I could actually have a good idea that that does work in an organization or for a group of people. That's awesome. So, did you ever, you know, take a step back and you look at the two of you and you say, you know, Johnny's kind of doing the work of two people. You should probably get the paycheck of two people. Uh, no, because I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give myself that much credit, but I do think that if women, um, wives, were able to express their feelings and give men feedback, I do think they'd be more productive. And if men were um, humble enough to take that yeah. and, and, and realize that you know it could add this whole different perspective um, to their jobs, I think it would really aid them. And then... I don't know. I, I'm very happy with um, with the role I've chosen to stay home and yeah. have all these kids. And so I don't think I add enough to Johnny's, to what he's doing at work to say that well he should make double what he does. I just I would say, can you give him an extra vacation day? There can you, you go. give him more time so he can be home with me? So. And and it's worked because I'm super humble. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> I won't argue. Okay, <laughs> so so let's go forward with property solutions story. So in in talking beforehand, uh, I, I understand that Johnny's taking credit for some of your ideas. Like all of them. <laughs> yeah, not just a few. But no, uh, we we talked about this on the drive up. Um, there's there aren't many big ideas that that were mine. I mean, there's a few, but it is, it, they're all born out of a conversation, okay. you know, and, um, but there's definitely things that he does that I know are me, that, yeah. that I shaped, that it was my telling him, no, I don't agree with that. No, think of it this way. And it was over a period of years to where now that's how Johnny does something. So mm -hmm. it's, which some of you that are coworkers may really not like that, but um, <laughs> it's uh, no, I, I I can take some pride in knowing like okay, he he just got a lot of credit for that, and that was me. But overall, you know, he comes home happy, and that's really gratifying to me. So yeah. I don't have to sit back and go, oh nobody nobody knows that I'm the one that does all of this. Yeah, no, it's a good it's a good balance. 
So, so have you ever told Johnny, hey, you didn't give me credit for that up there? All the time. <laughs> 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 he, it's only now, in the last few years, that he's like, yeah, okay, that was your idea. <laughs> But it took a little time for me to say, no, we were sitting here talking about this. I just don't have the best memory. She can yeah. remember <laughs> every <laughs> conversation and repeat it word for word. But no, I, and, and, and that's why I wanted definitely Paige to be up here too. Like, yeah. You know, I, I think, um, you know, just in talking to you and in, in, in uh, accepting this invitation, um, I, I just read a, another businesswoman talking about getting women more into the workplace. Uh -huh. And I think naturally here in Utah, you know, w we have a culture where, where women stay home, but right. but I think that the value that I've been able to get out of her and the value that my companies have been able to get out of her is incredible. And regardless of your education, right. you know, I mean, I again, she, she didn't, you know, I, I pulled her out of college, you know, basically. And, you know, it, this this to me is is what could happen in, in more lives or you know really involving your spouse I have friends who don't talk to their spouses at all about business sure and keep it totally separate and, and I don't think there's ne necessarily anything wrong with that I just think that um, there's a lot of value that could be added if there is more conversation around that or you or you know maybe more women would want to contribute um, if, if there was more of an open dialogue so it seems like this kind of came naturally to the two of you. If I, I'm a an entrepreneur and you know I don't have a ton of conversations, particularly about business, with my wife, and but I you know hear your story and see that there's value there. How how would I go about cultivating that from your perspective? Um, it, we've actually talked about this with some of our friends and, and other family and. And you know, one of my relatives just said, "Look, I've I've tried to bring up business with my wife, and she'll just say, oh, just fire that person,' you know, <laughs> and then and then the conversation's done, you know." And he's like, "Well, that's not what I was looking for. I was looking to kind of talk it through." And I think, to me, like you know, you're gonna have a different dynamic with your spouse, but I think if you can, you know, accept that and let them fire off and say, "Yeah, just fire that person," you know, but continue the conversation and say, uh -huh. "Well." here's some of that extra details that you might not be aware of, or here's some of my concerns of why I don't want to just fire that person, or mm -hmm. some of the ripple effects or dominoes that could happen if I do that. Um, you know, and, and, and go on with it versus just cutting it off and saying, oh, you know, they're, they're never going to listen, or they don't understand business, or, you know. It, so I, I, I think that there's, there's some of those instances that um, I think have happened with us too, where, where she's thrown out an idea and I've just said like, no way, that's not it. Well, and that's every other day because he comes home like with business mode, you know? So he's like, no, no, you don't understand. But it is this dynamic that has happened from the very beginning of our marriage where um, he has to volunteer more detail for, for me to understand more. Uh -huh. and, and sometimes I don't care to ask any questions about it, but I'm just, you know, collecting the information. And then other days, I'm pulling it out of him. You know, what What did you do today? And he'll tell me he had three meetings. And I'll say, well, was each meeting three hours long? <laughs> or, you know, so um, it, it is very much a back and forth. But it's it's taking the time to, to explain a full concept. Uh -huh. If I knew a bunch of little things, I'd never be able to connect the big picture. Um, and at the same time, if if he you know, didn't come home and talk about his stresses, he just came home stressed, I would and never, um, we n if I was never allowed to get the big picture and he never wanted to give it, then we would never get where we were. Sure. Um, so it was both me really wanting to understand what he did um, all day while he was away from me and him um, taking the time after work to still talk about work uh -huh. um, before going into, you know, I'm stressed. No, now, what are you stressed about? Kind of thing, but it it didn't just happen. It did take years of um, conversation. When we lived in Philadelphia for a few years, it didn't help that he worked from home, and I would sit on the bed and listen to his phone conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I had two kids, but I still was bored, and I wanted to know what was going on. Plus, I always was always going. It's six oh five. Why are you still on the phone? I heard you just talking about nothing for ten minutes. So like <laughs> these could be more productive conversations. It was awful. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but
but there was there was always that interest for me and then he did have a lot of patience in explaining it uh -huh. so we grew together in that <laughs> so, so now is, is there any different approach or is it just an evolution as you step into the this next startup together uh, the different approach for me is having to weed through the the many ideas okay and and actually say like I, well I like this one but um, th but this is new for me because property solutions was already there yep um, it had already taken off he um, he did start getting a paycheck right w after we started dating or right before we got married I guess the same um, but we I think um, I, I told it I'm pregnant, so my I just lost my train of thought it's completely. It's totally acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th I think the difference is we have five little boys under yep. the age of seven, and one on the way, and a puppy. So, like, that's a lot different than <laughs> yeah. when we were when we just got okay, married. Okay, now I remember what I was saying. <laughs> 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 um, no, so the difference with property solutions was its state, and now with Homie. Um, when Johnny left Property Solutions, there was a good two months where there was nothing. Uh -huh. And um, there are a lot of different companies that, that, that came and talked with him. A lot, a lot of people approached him with different ideas. And uh, I was really hesitant to get excited about certain ideas. But, um, but I, I fell back on that same trust that I know Johnny will provide for us no mm -hmm. matter what. Um, I trust his decision making, even if I don't. Yeah, I'm not the one telling him what to do. Um, but with Homie, it was different because he actually, he had to sell me on it quite a bit. Okay. Um, he had to sell me on the name Homie. Oh. <laughs> it, not so much the concept. <laughs> Where is <laughs> Peregrina? Um, I, yeah. Homie, I think, could change everything. So he had my support in that. But it was conversation after conversation of why, um, somebody like me would put a sign in my yard that says homie on it. Yeah. So, but it, again, that, that just brought this whole new wave of conversation, of debate, of, um, yeah, constructive conversation that we get to now, you know, be partners in something else. And I don't know if his partners have liked that I've been a big part and a big vocal part of his jobs, but you can't avoid my opinion. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. But Johnny's really good at softening my opinion. D do you feel more ownership in this than you did? I mean, you, you kind of took more of an active role with Property Solutions, I understand, after some time. Mm -hmm. And and so now, do you feel m more ownership because you can be here from the beginning of this idea? I think I would if I wasn't pregnant. Okay. Um, but I am kind of mentally, you know, checked, checked out with the business stuff. And I just keep thinking, oh, I'll come in um, and really really think about things you know after the baby comes and when I have more patience and yeah. when I I'm able to listen a little bit better but as far as it being I, I know what role homie will play in our marriage yeah I know what role the partners are gonna play in our marriage and um, so I'm already aware of it but I right now I'm just kind of taking a break from really worrying about that kind of stuff it sounds smart <laughs> So That's what I have to do. So, Johnny, g will you take us from the your sort of last phase at Property Solutions, why you decided to step away, and then give us an introduction to Homie and the story that's there? Yeah, so uh, Property Solutions was doing great. It's still doing great. Um, it's now Entrada is the name of the company, and right. we're just across the street here. Um, but, yeah, it's it's $100 million in revenue, uh, recurring revenue. It's growing like crazy. I was president. You know, we had a great income. It didn't. None of it really made sense of why we stepped away, but we felt it was time, uh -huh. and, and it was a mutual decision. You know, we, we, we both came to this and just thought, you know, it's time to move on. It had been 12 years, and... Um, I, I told my partners, I, you know, I, I approached them a couple after a couple nights of sleeping on it to make sure, you know, we, we both felt good about it. Mm -hmm. um, and, and they were both supportive. And so I, I told them, you know, I'd like to stay maybe another month and a half, two months and do a little transition plan. So hired, you know, a, a really good person to kind of step in in a role where, where there was a vacancy. Um, and yeah, all, all the people that, that were there, a few of them are here. You know, I, the guys that, you know, I mean, it's, it's a ship that's moving forward. It, didn't need me. Yeah. Um, really, really talented people there. 
Um, but yeah, so I ended up staying for another month and a half to the end of January. My, my partners threw a little going away party for me. And the, the very last day that afternoon, um, a, a guy that I knew pretty well who was my outside legal counsel, his uh -huh. name was Matt Thorne, and he brought um, his new partner, Mike, Mike Peregrina, with him that afternoon, and they pitched me on this idea. And it was basically to automate the whole home buying and selling process. So, you know, from contract to close, where you typically are bounced around from, you know, the appraisal, or th the lender, the inspector, title escrow, go back and forth, and the home buying process is just terrible for, for all of us. Um, they talked about automating it and then being able to also automate the realtor and not mm -hmm. have to pay that 6% uh, fee. So, yeah, it was huge. And I just said, you know, sign me up. And then I heard the name was Homie, and, I, and I'm a homie. So <laughs> I was like, this is, this is my deal. Um, but, you know, uh, I, you know, she said there was too much transition. And, and I told him, I said, I really believe in the idea. I think this is great, but I, I need some time. And, and so, you know, we took a little vacation. Um, I, I looked around at other companies. I entertained other ideas. I entertained other offers. Um, I, I thought about a couple things, you know, you know, what do I really want to do? And, and honestly, uh, you know, Mike Peregrina, aggressive guy was texting me probably 12 times a day telling <laughs> me to come back and this is, you know, this will keep me up at night. The only reason it kept me up at night was his text that kept coming <laughs> in. So, no, but honestly, I, I, I'm, you know, there's other companies who have tried to do this, yeah. but the way we're going about it, you know, after researching it, I, I, I don't know of anybody who's ever tried this approach, and I'm really excited about it. And and we're we have, uh, you know, we have term sheets coming in right now to get funding to kind of really propel us. We've been bootstrapping it for the last five six months, and um, yeah, and and you know, I didn't know Mike Peregrine at all. I, I knew Matt Matt Thorne from a business perspective a little bit. He right. was a great legal counsel for us, and then. Um, I knew we needed a tech guy, so my old co-founder at Property Solutions, who was only with us for our first three, four years, his name is Mike Trianfo, brilliant coder, great manager, and I knew we needed to get him on. So even before I joined, I told them to reach out to him, and, and Mike and Matt convinced him in about two seconds to join the team before I, I was, you know, a, a, you know, solid about my decision. Um, and, and Mike had also run development at Domo for a couple years, so I mean, he's got a great background. So we, we have a great team. We have a few other people that we've been bringing in that um, it just feels like the stars are aligning. And that's, that's really how we felt at Property Solutions. Like, you know, it, as we move forward, things just fit and things just made sense. And that, that's how it's feeling right now. So can you comment for me real quick about the timing? So w what are you, what audience are you targeting um, and how does that change how you position things either online or mobile? Um, are, are you going after millennials? Um, you know, wh where do you, from, from your perspective, you know, is this the right time to try again what others have essentially tried to do before? I, I think that's why I joined was the timing. So the timing and technology I think is right now yeah. in terms of like Airbnb, you reach out to the owner Mm -hmm. of, of a place directly. There's no middleman there. And, and you rent a room in their house, yeah. you know, and they let you in with the digital code with all their valuables around. Um, you know, Uber, the, the you know, ride sharing concept where you get in with a complete stranger in their vehicle. You know, th there's more trust. You know, again, paying rent online, nobody would pay rent online because they were afraid to put their credit card on internet. I mean, all yeah. of us are doing it now. So it's taken time to be able to purchase a home online. And I think that's where we are today. So a lot of these companies who've tried before, um, the internet wasn't there. People mm -hmm. weren't there in terms of consumer behavior. Um, but yeah, the, I mean, the, the concept behind it, it's, it's, it's great in that we can automate the whole process. So at Property Solutions, that's, that's what we did for the renter. We made the process for moving into an apartment very smooth. Renters previously had to apply online at some random company. Yep. They had to pay their security deposit and application fee at a, s at a different company. They had to get screened by a different provider. They had to buy renter's insurance from a different prov provider. So similar to going to the appraiser, the inspector, mm -hmm. the title escrow, like we're now simplifying, streamlining that process, making it just super easy, super smooth. But then there's technology where if people want to show their home, they can use digital, lo digital locks and, and just get a code to get in, get in, get out. A lot of people, they don't want to pull up, see the sign, see the realtor, call and schedule an appointment for a week from then when they're right in front of the home right then and there. Right. May as well click take a tour and get in the home. 
and and so there there's technology that you know with cameras with digital locks you know they can give you that safety but the name homey um, actually comes from this other concept where people in the neighborhood so you know like Paige is home from eight to three during mm -hmm. the school year. Um, she has that, you know, little bit of capacity to possibly help somebody show their home in yep. the neighborhood. Um, my mother-in-law, you know, she has different time on her hand too, where she could possibly uh, show a home. So people in the neighborhood, if if I were to sell a home, I could reach out to people that I know and ask them to be my home tour experts. So we call those the homies, the homies in the neighborhood. So they can, you know, when when they pull up and download the app and click take a tour now. If the homeowner doesn't want to give a digital lock and just let them in without anybody holding their hand, yeah. they could sign up for a homie. Or they could tell their friends to be their homies and when they click take a tour, it pings the people in the area and says, hey, somebody wants to see the home and they can accept it like Uber. Sure. You know, and say, yeah, I'll be there in five minutes. And the part I liked about that concept was um, when we purchased a home, I wanted to know about the schools. I wanted to know the neighborhood. I wanted right. to know kids, mutual ages, and um, and to have somebody who lives down the street that can tell me all of those things is to me is a lot more beneficial than a realtor coming in and saying, "Oh yes, I've heard that's a good school," or "I've you know your grocery store is about this much time away." I mean, it's it's a really qualified opinion of right where you're going to live. Right, because buying a home is much more than just the the house itself. Mm -hmm. it's, it's the experience of that neighborhood and the, the lifestyle. I can walk in and see that there's vaulted ceilings, and I can see that there's granite countertops, but I can't see if the neighbor next door is crazy. Sure. You know, if, or if the dog <laughs> barks nonstop behind me. So um, I, I really liked that concept. That's really cool. So uh, let's give it up for Paige and Johnny Hanna. All right, before we go, I want to give e each of you an opportunity to ask any questions you have for them. So if you have a question, now's the time. And uh, I'm not going to bring a mic to you because we don't have wireless mics. You just have to speak loud. And um, so any questions? And if you don't want me to answer it, you can say that. I won't give you my <laughs> opinion. <laughs> You know, it's, it, I mean, I, I think number one is we're trying to raise money. And this, everybody's been trying to disrupt this space for years. So Zillow and Trulia could have done this, but they're, they now just sell their leads directly to the realtors. So most of their money's made from selling those leads to realtors. So they're kind of in bed with that industry. Um, there's other companies like Redfin tried to do this 11 years ago, but I just think that timing was off. So other companies have started up where um, like Sherfield, Hauser, Solo Pro, there's a lot of these different companies. They are realtors and they're just, they're just hiring employees that aren't commission based to make the experience a little bit less pushy, um, which I think is great and, and they're providing better experience there, but they're not solving or automating anything. So it's a big problem to tackle, and a lot of people have tried to do it. So, you know, convincing others that the timing is now, convincing others that consumer behavior is ready for this, I think that's that's been the biggest challenge. You know, w w with our team, w I mean, I mentioned Matt Thorne is, was my outside legal counsel, great experience. Mike Peregrino was a, a VC in a at Mercado here in Utah, great VC firm. Um, Mike Trionfo, I gave a little background on him. So we have an amazing team, and that's what a lot of these VCs bet on. But that idea, it's, it's you know, it's show me some traction. Show me a few homes that you've sold. You know, get that going and then come back. And I think that's that's been our biggest challenge. No, I think his biggest challenge has been that he's needed to travel to go get funding, and I don't want him to. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's been saying, I have, you know, to be gone Tuesday through Thursday, and I'm going, no, maybe you can do it all on a Wednesday and a Thursday. So we've done a lot of, lot of day trips to <laughs> San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> That's his bi been his biggest challenge. Yeah. Um, it sounded like some of your features were the most in reach zone, most in the, the most frequent. What advice would you have to the other team? Will you repeat the question? Yeah, Please. yeah. So the, the question is, what advice do I have in, in bootstrapping companies? And, and we've done this the last six months. Um, you know, I, I think you just got to, 
as a group, so I mean, with 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 my partners currently, we just got to ask each other these questions over and over: Is this the is this is this a necessary expense? And you know, with going through property solutions, we got into habits of sharing hotel rooms. You know, or you know, putting beds down the middle, or putting pillows down the middle of the bed. You know, to separate each other on the. You know what I mean? Like, and then that became a habit. Even when we had money, people were like, "Dude, get your own room." You know. <laughs> So, no, I mean, it, it's just really looking at every single cost and, and asking that question over and over, is it, is it necessary? And, and I think I've even bugged some of my, you know, my, my current partners because I've never raised money. We, we never raised it at Property Solutions. So I've asked the same question over and over, like, do we really need to join this? Do we really need to do this? And they're like, dude, shut up. Just join it, you know? So I, I think, you know, I might go too far having come from 12 years of bootstrapping. But but I, I think that's a you know just really analyze every expense and and see if you really really need it. Oh. I Absolutely, the, the second biggest lobby group in the nation is is the National Association of Realtors behind pharmaceutical. So yeah, and, and my partners did all this research and educated me on this because this was a concern for me. But yeah, I mean, even here in Utah, I think 40% of the legislatures are realtors. So yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely a huge hurdle, but we're, we're a marketplace. We're just helping buyers and sellers meet online. So we're not representing the buyer or representing the seller so we don't have to become a realtor or follow those agency laws. So having Matt Thorne is, you know, having come from the legal background, he's been a wonderful partner in reading through that and understanding that, educating us and educating our investors and everybody else. But we definitely have an uphill battle. Th there's no question. But, you know, like uh, Zenefits had trouble coming in. So, you know, my partner, uh, Mike Peregrina, he's met with the lobby group that helped to change those laws. So he's gotten in front of them. So we've done some other things, you know, to get in front of this before you know, it, it comes out. We haven't even launched yet. You know, September 1st is our launch date. So we've tried to be strategic in, in who we're meeting with, making sure they're aware of what we're about to do and what could possibly be ramifications toward us. Although we're doing nothing illegal, right. we just want to make sure new laws aren't created to shut us down. You know, I, I, I think we, we were a little concerned on that, but I mean, we've lined up uh, so many different channel partners. They're so excited about this. And, and, and they use a, a, a term called realtor fatigue. You know, they, they, they have to wine and dine a lot of realtors and there isn't a lot of loyalty back to them. So they're excited to flip this industry. And, and they, they hardly make anything in the transaction where realtors make 6%. And I think, you know, everybody that we've ever surveyed or talked to feels that, it, it's an excessive amount, you know, and, and so that that's where they're saying, you know, this makes perfect sense, automate it. So, you know, we're kind of creating a for sale by owner on steroids. Yeah, right here. So. Yeah, and, and, and Paige is going to chime in here after I answer your question, I'm sure, on this one. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, think, I, I think it's difficult. I mean, I know it's difficult for me, and I know it's difficult for other friends of mine and, and partners that I've had in the past and other just coworkers in general, but I am consumed by this. I know I need to make a living for my family, and we're chipping away at our savings. We never sold any shares from Property Solutions, so, I mean, we're, we, we don't have just, you know, we can't just fund this on our own. So... It's, it's definitely stressful, so I get home and I want to check my phone, but she puts me in my place and says, you know, I'm talking to you. Would you be checking your phone if you were in front of an investor right now? You know, or <laughs> if, if you're having a, a, a client meeting, you know? So, so I mean, she, she's helped me, and, and we've, set, we've set, you know, some ground rules, like when you're home, set down your phone, and I don't always follow those, you know? He she never follows those, <laughs> but the rules are there. But the, uh, I would agree that it's this, um, I would like the same respect that a client or an employee is going to get. I'd like the same patience. I'd like the same um, time. And, and then priority. 
priority has been the biggest topic of conversation since we got married. Um, I understand that you need to go make a living, and I understand that this is all-consuming, um, but I am the most important partner. And I, at first I thought I was just kind of a brat saying that, but now I'm going, no, this is the relationship that goes through life, and I, um, and so we we do spend a lot of time working on this relationship, and our family is a priority to then go into to work, and uh, that was Property Solutions. That was probably the greatest lesson we were able to learn through that, that we can now take to another business. All right. On that note, let's give him one more startup grind. Thank you.